Hi everyone, my name is Shelby and you're watching Read and Find Out. Today I'm going to be doing a spoiler-free book review of Escaping Exodus by Nikki Drayden. I received an uncorrected proof copy of this book from a Goodreads giveaway, so that is how I got this book and I really enjoyed it. So I wanted to give you guys kind of a summary, what I liked about it and what I wasn't as big of a fan of. Escaping Exodus is a feminist space opera that features representation for LGBTQ plus people as well as people of color because everybody in Escaping Exodus is a person of color for the most part and our protagonists are women who love other women. I don't think it's ever explicitly stated if they are lesbians or if they are bi or pan but they are women who love other women. Seske Kali, that's just how I'm gonna say her name because I'm not entirely sure how you say it, she is the future matriarch of her clan. And her clan lives on a beast who is basically their ship in space. They go through different beasts and when the beast is about to die, they have an exodus and that is how their society kind of functions. Then they find another beast to inhabit. And her clan recently reawakened because they had an exodus from their former beast and they are now on a different beast. Seske has some pretty unconventional ideas for her society though. And she is also actually in love with her longtime best friend, Adala, who is a beast worker. Beast workers are much lower tiers within their society. They are the people who are trying to maintain the beast's health in various ways because they obviously need to have a healthy ship to live on. Beast workers also can be people who are kind of harvesting or making sure that it's okay for them to live off the beast, however that may be. And Adala is about to get an assignment to a specific, actually highly coveted area of the beast to work in. So there are a lot of things that are trying to keep these two apart and they have their own alternating perspectives with different things that are going on, but it seems like there might be change coming to the clan. And that's as much as I think I can say about it without getting into spoilery territory. I really enjoyed the setting of the beast. It kind of feels like body horror in a way because they are inhabiting a living creature. It's really kind of creepy, but also interesting. It was such an interesting setting. This is something that I feel like I've been reading a bit more recently and it was not anything that I had come across previously. Like before this year, I had never read anything like this. So it's very unique in that way. This is also Afrofuturist because like I said, the majority of the people I believe in Seske's clan are people of color. However, there are other clans on other ships, aka beasts, who do not look and behave in the same way that they do. I think I mentioned this is a matriarchy not all the other clans are living in that way. I also liked seeing the queer representation that was just kind of seamlessly woven into this as well. And then my final thing that I really enjoyed was the world building. The world building was really my favorite part. I already mentioned how interesting I found the setting of the beast, but seeing how their society worked, there are very different family dynamics where there are basically different kinds of mothers and fathers within a family unit. So it's not one parent, like one mother, one father, and their children. It is multiple kinds of mothers and fathers who have an entire unit of family and they could have different relationships within their unit. That was something I hadn't really seen so much in science fiction either, and I liked that a lot. It was a little bit confusing, but I feel like I kind of was getting the hang of it as the book went on, and I feel like if this had been an actual series and not just a standalone, that I really could have understood it on a different kind of level. But with it being a standalone, there are still some, there are still some things that I don't quite get, but maybe on reread I would. And then there were a couple of things that I wasn't as big of a fan of, the main one being the inconsistent characterization. I felt like Seske and Adala kind of flip-flopped in ways, like they weren't consistently... I don't know. They changed as people as I know people do, however I don't think that it was a very long period of time that this was occurring in, and I also didn't think that they felt fully realized as people. So that was a big drawback for me, and for one particular character who at the beginning, even though he wasn't like a wonderful person, I felt like he was not the bad person in the beginning that he ultimately seemed like he was by the end, that felt inconsistent for me as well. Like he was being pushed into seeming like a bad guy 
for convenience sake, like with the plot. That was one of my big drawbacks. I also didn't really buy into the main ship for some reason. The main ship is in the relationship with Sasuke and Adala. They're kind of pairing because they are in love. I didn't quite actually get or care about. <laughs> like it was there and it was fine and it was not my favorite part of the book. Maybe because we see them apart so frequently and for most of the book they're not really around each other so maybe that's part of the reason why I never bought into it. It's more like telling and not showing you the connection that they have. But there was so much else going on in the book that that didn't take away from my enjoyment too, too much. So I ultimately ended up giving this book four stars. I mentioned in a recent wrap up actually that I feel like this book really would appeal to people who liked The Stars Are Legion by Cameron Hurley because of that kind of beast, physical being, almost body horror kind of stuff that was going on. Also An Unkindness of Ghosts by River Solomon because of the kind of caste systems almost within their ship, and then the dynamics between people who are a very different social standing. And then Lagoon by Nadia Korafor because of one, like the Afrofuturism, and then also something about the relationships between a particular beast and a particular character. Something about that I found similar to the alien connection in Lagoon. I don't know why exactly, but they mirrored each other. So if you like Cameron Hurley, River Solomon, and Nadia Korafor, you might want to pick up Escaping Exodus because I think that it combined a lot of aspects of their works. Comment down below and let me know if you have read Escaping Exodus and what you thought of it, if you did. And if you haven't read it, is it something that you are interested in picking up? This is probably one of the books that I would consider nominating for the BookTube SFF Awards for the science fiction category in 2020. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you have a good day and until next time. Bye.